I'm going to call your mother. <laughs> it really worked very well. Um, some other people that are here that are special guests is I would like to recognize Bob Burnett.
definitely impart that lesson. That I know she's a very treasured part of the district, and I thank her for, for everything that she's done for the district well before I got here, and then also for making things like tonight possible. Um, she really is the glue that holds this all together. So um, I'm going to keep my comments very brief. Uh, got a lot to get to, but uh, just know it's, it's very much an honor for me to be the superintendent of Afton, especially, you know, a night like tonight makes me reflect on, uh, you know, the, the fact that there's a lot of folks that you don't want to let down. There's a lot of folks here that remember um, the, how great Afton was. And so I want everybody to know that we've got a lot of staff members working very hard right now to keep Afton great, keep Afton strong. We've got kindergarten students, middle school students, high school students, uh, early, uh, or, you know, pre-kindergarten students, and they're doing everything they can to make sure that we're, you know, creating the next alumni that you're going to be proud of, the next alumni that will be invited back to be on the stage, that will carry forward um, everything that you remember to be great about Afton. We're carrying that forward, but then also um, making new things that we're going to be known for in the future. So very humbling for me to, to know that I can be a part of that, um, and I'm committed to that success. And um, I appreciate everyone being here. Um, and this is uh, shaping up to be a really, really enjoyable evening. And I'm glad I could be a part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and pass the microphone to Athens Education Foundation President, Kurt Gaither. Thank you, Dr. Bob. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm Kurt Gaither. I'm the current president of Athens. I want to get to the show. I just want to recognize the three people that came before me as presidents. If uh, Jim Mann is in the building, stand up. John Sandler and Jack Musgrave. <laughs> also, uh, my name is Mr. If you're a member of the Evan Education Finance Board, please stand up and be recognized. Thank you. Thank you. As you alluded to, we had our $2 million goal and we awarded uh, 14 AES scholarships and loans. Uh, the total value was about $650,000 over the four years, just for this year. We now have a full ride to Washington University. We have one to Truman. We have one to Westminster. Uh, we have eight $2,500 a year AES scholarships, six interest-free loans. We sponsor the bus trips in the spring fall to get these kids out to see schools they might not get to see. Uh, the money from this to Niagara and our previous deals go up to the teacher grants uh, that we award every fall. And we've given out about a half a million dollars of teacher grant money. So I would like to thank all the people that make that possible, all the alums that go in. It's going to be a great show. My pleasure to introduce Tom Palacios, 77. He's on the board of AEF. Uh, he's our, one of our vice presidents of his band, Andromeda.
Good evening, alumni, faculty, students, and friends of the Acton District. It's good to see so many of you here tonight. This is a record crowd for the annual Foundation fundraiser. There's over 400 people here tonight. And we did it all without liquor. <laughs> I hope you all had a good time, and I really hope you all spent a lot of money. I know there are a few after graduates in the crowd out there that don't belong to the Afton Education Foundation, or belong to the Afton Alumni Association, I'm sorry. I encourage you to join your membership in the Alumni Association get you the Cougar World Newsletter to keep you updated on current events going on in Afton and also tell you about other alumni activities. A part of that small fee that you pay will also help provide a scholarship to a well-deserving Afton senior. As, as always, the Alumni Association has a couple awards to present. The first one goes to the senior alumni in the crowd. If you are from the class of 1950 or before, raise your hand. Congratulations. You won the support? Please come up. I'll come down. <laughs> okay. One more award. Last one's going to go to our youngest alumnus. So, if you graduated in the year 2010, raise your hand. 2010? He's here somewhere. I can't see him. He's in the back. He's in the back? <laughs> if you graduated after 2010, 2011 or 12, Raise your hand. Okay. How about I offer you the award and you can give it to me? <laughs> Will that work? Yes! Come on! <laughs> and his name is?
Best known for his role as Dan Connor on the television series Roseanne. Having contributed to more than 50 films, he's also won an Emmy, a Best Actor Golden Globe, two American Comedy Awards, and hosted Saturday Night Live 14 times. Please welcome the staff of 1970 graduate, John Goodman. sideways and they couldn't find us, but um, we were at Hazelwood, I think, we were losing at halftime, and it was like Newt Rockney in the, in the uh, locker room, and the team was ready to rip the lockers apart, we went out, we won in the second half, there's never been anybody like Coach Burnett, and I'll tell you, I'll never forget him, in fact, when my father died a uh, year after I graduated from Afton, he was uh, behind me at the service, I'll never forget. Football too, right? Yeah, really good. Not so well. We won in the four years I went uh, in the school district, almost five. <laughs> <laughs> the four years we played, we won one game. Really? Six to nothing. <laughs> well, I don't know when you came to the theater. <laughs> There's more girls. <laughs> um, you audition for a little after on a bet, is that? Is no, that? it's on a dare. <laughs> a friend of mine and I were driving around and uh, it's the same story again. I go, why are you doing this? He goes, you might as well come with me. I go, okay. And, uh, I said, why are you doing this? He's a girl. Miss R, uh, I know Miss R was a formative presence in your uh, theatrical education, especially in the early days. Did you get a funny story, Miss R? Think, yes. <laughs> I know that you tried to tell a story that you were suspended on the last day of dress rehearsal for Hello Dolly. 
Yeah, they, they got me on these trumped up charges. <laughs> <laughs> Being late for class. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay, I'm late for class again. What are you going to do? <laughs> so they could, the night of the dress rehearsal, they suspended me for the weekend, I think. Because uh, I had to sneak in here. I didn't get to rehearse, but I locked it all in and watched everybody. The best part so was she didn't know I was here. <laughs> Until tonight. She apparently uh, she thought that you had skipped and. I was pretty sneaky. <laughs> Uh, Tony, you came to Athens as a freshman. Uh, all your siblings, I think, went to Kirkwood, right? Yes. Um, yes. How, how, <laughs> <laughs> um, how was your experience here at Athens? Um, the colors. The colors is what got me. Purple and gold. <laughs> <laughs> they were into that red and white. Purple and gold is what got me. Um, my experience was honestly fantastic. Judy Rethwich, Mama Rethwich, you know, he felt her wrath. But um, <laughs> it was it was great. Believe it or not, it was funny when Mr. Bill was talking about the coach. I fell in love with football because of Coach Hill. Um, <laughs> he made me want to be a football player. And my mom was like, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> Quarterback, but, um, <laughs> but it, it was it really was one of the most um, lasting experience and impressions that I was able to have that helped me to be the person um, that I am. The big word that always comes to mind is diversity, and it taught me um, what being diverse is about, and it prepared me for the real world. So, yeah. I'm not the funny guy, he's the funny guy. <laughs> 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 and probably the time football was a big part of your after experience. Yes, it was, and uh, we won more than one game. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, our next topic of conversation will be taking risks and challenges here at Afton. Um, we don't always have to start with Bill. We can, uh, um, maybe we can start with you, Tony. Um, with taking risks and challenges, what's the scariest thing you've ever done? Is it hard living in North St. Louis and being the only one that's coming down to Afton for school? No. <laughs> the scariest thing I ever did here at Afton was try it out for the pom-pom. <laughs> I had no idea what that really looked like until they told me to do a split. <laughs> then I said I'll take growing up on the north side any day. <laughs> but I didn't make pom pom, but I did make into the drama club and I actually did a couple of plays. So it was scary in the beginning because I couldn't believe like I'm really doing this. But you had the North Side girl, you know, running on stage, being Oliver, saying murder. And <laughs> 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 uh, Marcus, what are some of the tough uh, experiences? I know that you've battled some injuries in the early days of your NFL career. Uh, what have been some of your uh, challenges and how have they helped mold the guy you are today? Uh, I had a bunch of challenges just growing up, period. Just having to come where you're from and work hard and want to have goals in your life and having ups and downs through trying to reach your goals, too. So I, I, did, I did had a lot go on in my life from getting injured in football, but also just uh, just trying to be a better man every day and learning from my mistakes and just doing what I got to do to take myself and the people I love around me to the next level. And so I didn't learn a lot just from that experience of being here at Afton and, of course, putting that with what I've been through since leaving Afton. And all your families, yeah. Yes, I got a, a, a big family in St. Louis from, from my mom's side, Golden, to the Everwise side. They always here to support me. They're over there right now. Um, coming back uh, this way, John, what, are, what have been some of your risks and challenges <laughs> apart from that suspension on Hello Dolly? I lived every day in fear. <laughs> There's all something I didn't do, homework, show up. Uh, yeah, I, uh, 
I was offered a really great education here, and I managed to let it slide because I I was extremely immature when I went here, and I had all these great opportunities. I just uh, walked into the high school, I was walking around a little bit, and I started getting the what ifs. You know, what if I would have done this better? What if I would have done this? I mean, everything worked out, but. Um, yeah, I wish I, I, I wish I would have uh, done that. You know, just been here more instead of drifting off somewhere wherever I was going. Uh, but it took me to find something I was interested in, and then okay, I need English for this. I need uh, math for this. I need science. I need this and this, and I'll, I'll use whatever I can get. And uh, it was all right here, the basis of it. But no, I you know. I, I live in fear. <laughs> you still live in fear. No. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> then Bill, what's the scariest thing uh, that you face? I'm not sure about scariest, but uh, when I was in about sixth grade over at Higgy School, I got a call from one of my pals, Tom Davidson, We're on a Sunday. He says, come on over. Where are you? We're over at the gym playing basketball. Come in. Come to the back door. So they go to the back door, they open the door, we go in, and there's six of my pals that are playing basketball. We're inside the gym on a Sunday at Higgy School. This is like heaven. Wood floors. Instead of being out in the concrete in the back. Of course, we had a couple of laddie bars on the way out because the cafeteria is open on a Sunday for us. When I get home Sunday night and I get this call and he says, I think we're in trouble. I go, what? Who's in trouble? We're in trouble. The custodian called the cops. The next day we were at Juvenile Hall in St. Louis County. <laughs> I got my hand up. I'm guilty. I took Bill Thompson, Laddie Bar, a couple of three by five cards that were on the table by the coaches thing. We played basketball, we were tossed out, we went on probation. What I remember the most is the look on my dad's face and my mom's face. Which, by the way, came back, I'll have to continue this one step further. Because I, I have to say the lessons learned in my 12 years going through after were incomparable in my life. It lasted forever. But I have right here with me my first eight years of my report card. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not kidding. Wow. One through eight. Bill broke receipts. And <laughs> And even though uh, people have suggested that I've maybe been involved in some leadership and a few things like that over the years, my second grade teacher, Mrs. Murphy, Mrs. Musgrave, said that I'm counting on Bill to exert more self-control <laughs> because of his leadership abilities and the group leaders must know when to be under control. Well, that got a rise from my parents, too, but that was second grade. <laughs> Fast forward, eighth grade, and this is when you have all the different teachers, okay? Each one of them have to fill out one of these cards, math, social, something like that. First quarter, coming back from a summer, you're ready to go. Speech, Mr. Sachs, laughs at any disorder, promotes some. Arithmetic, Mr. Baker. Bill has turned into a playboy. <laughs> I hope it is a stage he's going through for his own good. <laughs> Mr. Ricky, social studies. Can't bridle his tongue. But the best. And he gave me a three, and the scores were one through three. <laughs> and we're ready for the quarter, and this is Mr. Agnew, shop and homemaking, etc. I guess it was Mr. Shop. I have never seen more deterioration in a student attitude than the other year. I've got to finish the story by saying the first quarter parent comments and signature. Mr. Thompson and myself, this is my mom, Mr. Thompson and myself were very disappointed. 
we've had a talk with Bill. <laughs> except, except the situation to approve. And ladies and gentlemen, that was some talk. <laughs> to this day, I've never forgotten. It was painful. This is a good transition. I, I, I know there's some uh, younger students uh, here tonight too. So how did you? <laughs> so um, if you can briefly tell me how you transitioned your life from an eighth grade playboy into a uh, million dollar endowment sort of guy. Um, uh, briefly, what, what, what did you learn during after that you could apply to later in life? Again, back to people, uh, the coaches, the teachers we had. There was lessons all the time and they cared about us. And we were all from a neighborhood of real people. Um, and I, I still mean that today. Uh, the streets I grew up on on Colleen Drive were plumbers and electricians. Everybody paid their bills. Everybody went to work every day, and uh, there was a real solid attitude about what mattered in life. And you learn when you got a job, whether it was a summer job, whether it was your first job out of school, it meant something, and you went to work every day, you never missed, there were no excuses, and you couldn't just blame somebody else if you didn't, if you didn't do the job. And you had to make good decisions. And, and I must tell you, the best decision that I ever made and thank goodness I made it early in my senior year. I walked over to a locker that is somewhere over there and met Nancy Beckman Thompson today, who is 50 years ago my wife. I'm very serious about this. I've gone a lot of places, done a lot of things, made a lot of decisions, good, bad, and everything. But there's nothing more important than the decision to select a spouse and to spend the rest of your life to love somebody, in this case, to be the mother of your kids. I'm the luckiest person in the world. I really mean that. Nancy, love
that is a good strong school system. Good strong school system. Um, Tony, you work with kids now, so you probably have a lot of insight on the importance of a foundation. Um, I, I agree definitely with, with John. Um, see, it, it was different for me, of course, as it was for them, because I was coming from the city. I, you know, it was a whole different atmosphere and I didn't know what to expect. We was getting on the bus at six o'clock in the morning and having to get to school and not knowing how I would be, you know, accepted or if I would be accepted because I was different. You know, it was a, it was a bus, a bus load of us or whatever, but I was different. We were different. But I think the best thing I can ever say I got out of Afton was Judy Rethwich, um, Miss Blackman, Miss Carpenter, my guidance counselor. Um, I, I didn't realize or, or know at that time, and I was talking behind stage about it, what the word prophesy you know, means when you prophesy about somebody. And I was told by some teachers, and I'm not gonna, you know, sugarcoat and make it seem like everything was all roses. But um, I did have some teachers that, that told me I wasn't going to college. You know, that's not what you do. Um, that's not what's in your cards. But I had people like Judy Redwich, uh, Coach Pacina. These these are coaches, and I wasn't even the sports. Trust me, I was not the sports. <laughs> <laughs> but these were, you know, people that at that age was leaving, you know, major things and, and memories in my head telling me you're going to help people, you're going to, you're going to be different, you can do this, and, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to help people know who you are. I'm like, I'm going into fashion merchandise. <laughs> it's like, no, Ms. Carpenter told me, no, you're not. You're going to be something where you're helping people, and never in my life that I imagined that's what I would be doing, definitely. Never did I imagine I would be a principal helping kids like John. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> But from that, I did learn a lot where I'm now seeing, you know, from what I got, and everything he's saying is so true. I, I can truly understand leaving and coming back and seeing it, what Afton Strong means. And it really is Afton Strong. I don't care where you're from. Not, I'm not in grow up in Afton, but I will tell anybody, I am Afton Strong. And Marcus, I know you're, you're, you're new in your career. Uh, uh, you've been in the Cardinals, I think, for four years. Is that right? Yes, yes. So it's a... Uh, your, your rear view mirror is much closer than the rest of ours. <laughs> but um, how does Afton help uh, prepare you for, for what you're doing? A lot, a lot. I was saying that I can agree with everything they were saying up here because I, I got a lot of people help me from that. But people stand out the most to me, man. Just a lot of people help me out from just going. I went all, went all way, I went all the way to the easy kid to deal with too, especially growing up in uh, grade school. I had a lot of help, man, from Coach Hill, little Coach Hill right here. <laughs> Helping me out when I was in seventh grade, he was on me because he had a good relationship with my mom through my brother Sherman. So he was always on me no matter what. And just coming from there, Coach Moiko, me coming from uh, middle school, Coach Moiko doing the same, Coach Ford in middle school too. And just having all those guys, Coach Oliver, of course, and of course, big Coach Hill too. Of course, he helped me out a lot. So just people, man, being there for each other and no matter what, and just never giving up on me and helping me out, even when I was having my ups and downs. Um, collaboration and teamwork is the next topic of conversation on our chat list. Um, Bill, you've had so many successful partnerships. Can you talk about what sparks uh, a successful professional relationship? Well, I mentioned the first one, which has gone 50 some odd years, uh, in my case, with my wife. But in terms of partnerships, uh, it, you know, you take a lot of forms from a from a formal business relationship to a, to a local friendship, a neighbor, something like that. 
And they're all different. And again, it comes back to people, right? I mean, you've got to understand who your partner is. You're willing, you're willing to accept mistakes and errors and failures. And it's amazing how when you test somebody with a tough decision, a failure, and even great success, it's amazing to see how they respond. And when you see people that have great success, one thing I always look for is, what changes? You know, if they make a lot of money, do you find a different side of them? You're darn right you do. I see a lot of that. And let me tell you, it's not a pretty sight. I've seen a lot of people that make bad decisions, bad partners. You can split up right away, or you can say, you know what, we're in this together. And you decide it's time to move ahead. But I think there's been a little bit of a partnership here at this school district over the years. My mom worked at the district for years. My dad was on the school board. And I think back to a superintendent like Gay Tompkins, people that I've known over the years, you can't run a place like this unless there's a partnership. And the same is true now with the Educational Foundation. The leadership, the people that have served on that board, I know some of the board members that, that were in high school with, with me and my brother Terry. Uh, they've given everything, and it's a partnership. It has to survive over time. Not everyone does. And you've got to be prepared to make a decision if it doesn't. And that's about it. Um, John, you said collaboration is essential to be an actor. Um, I didn't prepare all these questions, but there's a great quote here attributed to you. Um, you've called yourself an egomaniac, an egomaniac with an inferiority complex. <laughs> Which is such a great line, I might steal that one for myself. Um, as someone who depends so heavily on scene partners, actors, uh, directors, producers, um, what has been your uh, secret to success with collaboration and teamwork? Listening helps. <laughs> I got I got it here again, but uh, I love playing football. I love for summer to come around, we can start practicing again. I love the death. And I love being part of a team. That doesn't make me great by any means. It didn't even make me good. But I like teamwork. Working with other people, you are as strong as that weakest link. You better straighten them out. And there is nothing in this world that you do by yourself. I didn't, I didn't get anywhere by myself. I had help. I had this system. Um, at the time, Southwest Missouri State University, the people if you're, if you're on stage and you look somebody in the eye and you're thinking of what a swell guy you are, you, you're not going anywhere. You're there to help the, the other person. You're, you're there to listen to fit in. Now, it took me a long time to learn this stuff because I, well, I had problems, but uh, I finally came around and you, you, you can't go anywhere without being here first. You, you got to get your feet on the ground and listen. And uh, you got to trust people. And that's a long time I didn't. And uh, if, yeah, if you trust somebody, man, that, that's your world. And you, you're open to a voice from somewhere else, um, and everything just gets easier. But you got to have, uh, you got to have faith, and you got to listen. You built so many uh, initiatives and uh, community initiatives in North St. Louis. What, what have you observed as tips in collaboration and teamwork? Pretty much what they said. Um, you have to build trust. I mean, that, that's the biggest thing. The area from which I came from, and, and I always have to acknowledge my mom and my dad, but my mom was for, for the longest a single mom. And just coming from where we came from, they they really kind of instilled in us how you're supposed to respect and understand anybody and people as, as a whole. So it's funny when you say collaboration because when I came into the field that I came into when I started building homes, um, I was working with an auto person and they moved some homes from the airport. That was the worst project in the world. 
but they moved some homes from the airport over to the city's north side, and I ended up overseeing this project. Knew nothing about construction, but I was quick to learn. And the first thing the contractor said was, here's this pretty young girl. They just using her as a front. So never in life did they imagine, here's this pretty young girl saying, no, that roof needs to go over here. I want the, the floor looking like this. Where's the trestles? I need the carpet here. I started telling them the measurements. And they was like, wait a minute. I say, yeah, that's not the pretty young girl. That's the girl that know what I want. And I'm the owner of this property. This is how I where I was a contractor and I was able to build over 42 homes within the area that they knew would be robbed, you know, tore down, but it wasn't because we came in being partners with the residents in the neighborhood. We didn't come saying this is what we're going to do. We came saying what do you need? And if we give it to you, how do you help sustain? It? So we, we went with the holistic approach and I'm saying all that to say how does it resort back to Afton and where, where did it come from? I know in my heart after play a huge role in me understanding how and what it takes to be partners. You know, when Judy, and I always go back to her because she had us doing things I never imagined I would be doing. Like, why am I here doing a video, shooting, a, being a, a producer or what have you of a show that I'll never see again, but we did see it. But and she, she showed us how to work with everybody and create this play, and she would say, it's up to you. Now, I don't know how you figure it out, but you figure it out, and I'll come back and let you know if that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what helped <laughs> And Marcus, you're probably the best example of someone who uh, knows about teamwork because you are literally on a team. team. <laughs> uh, what are some of the secrets to success at the Cardinals? Well, for now, at the Cardinals. Uh oh, speaking of secrets, I was always coached by my uncles and by my dad growing up. So I was, I had to listen no matter what. So <laughs> listening a lot, you had to listen because they was hard on me, man. So I was felt like that prepared me growing up to knowing that no, it ain't about me, just about me. You can't be selfish. You have to look out for other people because it's like everybody working together for this one goal. And if you be selfish and don't do your job, that goal is not going to work out at all. And other than that, just make, just learning from experience and like he said, just listening, man. That's what I always say, just listening and not trying to do too much talking. Like somebody trying to explain something to you and you over talking them and not really getting the message. So that's what I learned, just to be able to listen and uh, at the end of the day, know that you're working together for one goal. And, that's, and it's, if you work together, it's going to go take you far. years ago and being involved uh, is 
really connected us with some of the great people here in Ashton. The, the people on this board, the leadership, the leadership at the school, it's, it's a special place. I hope you all realize, you know, um, there's a lot of good, our kids went to public schools out in California, and we saw this idea of the foundations of families stepping up and helping the school, because, you know, there's never enough money in the state. They're always pulling money back, of course, and for a second grade teacher or a junior high school teacher to have extra money to enhance the, the program, music, education, uh, art, all the special things that don't come with the ticket from the state. It's so important, and it's not fair when people can just afford to send their kids to private schools at almost any price, and let's face it, it's gotten ridiculous. We were talking about the price of private schools back in New York City, and it's true of California and everywhere here in St. Louis, too. It ought to be fair and reasonable for, for all the kids, and Afton is, whenever I come back, and if we meet with people here and have a chance to talk to, to them about the experience, it's pretty special. And for a school that is this small and a community that's not even incorporated, it is an amazing story. And I hope somebody writes it someday because uh, pulling up, as John said, when we grew up, everybody was a veteran. Uh, the neighborhoods were the same. Sometimes the first ever to go to college. This is a heck of a story. And to have it as it is today, with the opportunity for the kids that are here now and for the future, we want to make it like this forever. And that's the reason we've got a sustainable element here. And I'm just so proud of it. I, I love coming back, and it's, I, I'm thrilled that we were invited to come back to this. So. Yeah, I just, I just love to come back and visit, man. Every, anytime I can come back, it's always great memories. You get to see the people you grew up with, from teachers to students and stuff like that. So I just love to come back and just give me a good feeling in my body, man, just to be back and just to be around where it started at and just where places were motivated you to go get what you, the, the dream you're living on right now, you know? So it's always a blessing just to come back and see all these beautiful people here supporting us and everything, man. So I love it, man. Best feeling ever. What's the secret sauce of Afton? So Afton is special to me because because of its roots and because it never forgets the people that matter the most. Everybody that's here, you remember your parents, you, you got your kids, your friends, your teachers. You never forget the people that matter the most in your life, and that's the most important thing that I remember about all the people that I knew here. People. People. Keep it simple. <laughs> Family. Family, same thing. Family and people, everything they said.
question is, what do you know doing? Like the seats, the brand of auction. We got paid for this now. Enjoy that. Uh, auction folks, come on forward. That was terrific. Fancy more music from Andromeda. But we're going to do a little, uh, a little auction time here. So if you would, keep your hands nice and high. And we're going to do the first item up of four carbon five seats. Four diamond boxes to the St. Louis Cardinals game, such as 158 Road J. Seat 5678. Turn the lights up, please. All right, we're going to start this at 500 bucks. Let's get a hand for four Cardinals tickets. Give me a $500 bid, please. There it is. It's the Spicer. Right here, 600. For four cards, this right here is 600. Get your hand up nice and high, so you got 600 in the back. 600 right here is 700. Get your hands up nice and high. Alright, we're trying to move books, this is where we go once and 700, twice and 700. Just the cold right here in the back. Thank you very much, guys. 